In this video we fire on the refractory for the first time. Some of the refractory managed to get under the inner form and you're breaking away. Then I hammered the plug out from above. Got a bit of a fright when I realised some of the refractory came out with it. But I made the top so thick it wasn't really a concern. I used the half round file to round the edges of the refractory, as well as level under where the tabs were. Poor file seen nothing but abuse since the day I got it, but it's held up surprisingly well for one of those DIY store 500 set files. Before I could really do anything else with the refractory I needed the burner working. The original orifice was too large, being for low pressure natural gas, so I decided to make a new one. First thing was to change the change gears on the lathe, it's not my favourite task and I avoid doing it when possible. I'm going for a 0.7mm pitch and this chart tells which gears need to go where. Fitting with this banjo is what makes me hate the process the most. The brass hex bar was faced and then turned to the diameter of the threads. Hollowed the back a bit with the tool to make the drill a bit less likely to wonder, and then I drilled part way. Finally a groove was made with the Barton tool to give the threads somewhere to end. I squared the 60 degree threading tool up by eye against a sheet of white paper for contrast. After that I made a shallow pass to score the thread pitch. I checked this against an M4 tap to see if I got the pitch right with the change gears. It was right so I started threading. Threading can be a real rigmarole. The cross slide zero to touch them apart, the cutters advanced with the compound set to 29 degrees. Once the tool reaches the groove, the lathe stopped, the cross slides pulled back out about two turns, then the lathe is set to reverse, then the cross slides advanced back in two turns. The new cut is dialed into the compound slide and the whole process is repeated. It requires a lot of attention, but you can quickly muck up your work. As I felt I was getting closer to the final size, I started sending the carriage out further away so I could test fit the thread. Once the thread was the right size, it needed a trim into length to fit in the holder. Here's a little carriage lock I made a while back. The grooming tool didn't take me deep though, so I had to finish the cut of the hacksaw. The ball protects the ways from the saw. The 
Then the front of the gas orifice was faced and the sides were tapered. The pin chucks borrowed from a cheap rotary tool that never really worked. It's held in a 4 jaw chuck with a 0.8mm drill. I used a bit of plumbing tape to seal it. You're supposed to use a thicker yellow tape for gas, but I had a hard trap finding any. I tried testing for leaks of soapy water before using the thing for reels. The burner wasn't quite working right though. It was blowing itself out before I could get enough air in to get rid of the yellow flames. After asking for help online, I got a few suggestions. The easiest to try out seemed to be adding a flare, which did help a bit, but wasn't enough. So I made a new gas orifice at 0.6mm. The idea was to increase the velocity of the jet and draw more air through the venturi. A guy called VS Team described burner design as pure guesswork. There's a lot of conflicting information online and the whole field seems shrouded in myth. But the small orifice seems to be working well enough for my purposes. I used the oven to try and drive moisture out of the refractory. The original plan was to give it 20 minutes each 50 degree increment. I had a lot of time to waste while keeping my eye on the things I baked. Going through the camera settings I found I could take 120 frame per second footage at a low resolution. At 30 frames a second that makes it about 4 times as slow. Back of my throat was starting to get a bit sore though, so I decided to cut the oven short and I was worried that I was getting cement dust around the house. We had about an hour in the oven but uh, there was still plenty of steam coming off. It was a nice day outside when the sun shone so it wasn't too bad in the garden. It took a while to get a good setting for the burner. Too low and any gust of wind would snuff the flame, and too high enough felt I was wasting a lot of gas and maybe heating the refractory too fast. My blowtorch also chose a great moment to pack in, but the spark was enough to relight the forge. After a while, it was hot enough inside to give it a test. And it works. It glows a bit dull, but maybe that's because it's a bright day outside. Come on. When sitting outside, I tried to get some footage of the red kites, but I didn't have much luck. This is about the best shot I managed to get. Pretty pleased with it so far. Next I need to figure out how to ventilate the garage so I don't uh, gas myself with carbon monoxide when it's running. 